Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and we are back, and I have another lunch bag. We're going to use a lunch sack video for you, and this is going to be that new series that I mentioned when I made the Edith Holden lunch bag journal. So I hope you guys like these projects. So this one is a lunch, an envelope that's nice and um, substantial by the time you get it all folded up and layered made with a lunch sack and it has two inside pockets and this was an idea i saw on a channel soda pop guys i can't remember the full name soda pop journals or soda pop crafts something like that i will link that channel for you guys in the description so that you can see the one that she made. She uh, made one and showed it and then showed you the folding techniques. I'm gonna go a little bit further, show you the folding technique and then how the measurements for layering if you're using a standard size, you know, paper bag. So anyway, it's gonna be cute. Now, these papers are beautiful and this is a kit by G. Kerr and it's Shabby Blue Christmas, and her Etsy shop is Happiness and Crafting, and I have followed her for a long time and just love her products. So I decided to get this kit for myself, and I think it would be, of course, there's plenty of Christmas images in here, like the little uh, Christmas angels and stockings and trees and Santas. But you could use some of these background papers and things, I think, just for like a winter-themed journal. Some pretty ornaments if you wanted to. So just a thought there. And oh, it's like this one is just kind of like a really pretty blue, like a Wonderland kind of theme. I... Oh, this is what I wanted to tell you. I made both of these pockets so that if you would like to use this for a Christmas, like for a gift card holder, so you could use any themed papers. Again, it could be birthday, it could be whatever. But this pocket and this pocket hold a standard size gift card, credit card, whatever. And this one goes in a little bit easier with a thick here. This is my pretend credit card that I use for, oh, I know what I had planned. So it would go this way and then it still closes fine and then it also fits this way. That's why I was having trouble getting it in there. So you don't have to use it as a gift card holder, but I just thought it was another idea that would be cute. And um, there's all kinds of cute little tags and fun things we can play with with this paper kit. I'll also have that linked for you in the description if you are interested. Okay, let me get all this stuff out of the way. I just love it and I think it turns out cute and it's not hard at all. So let's get started. I'm gonna set that aside. You do need a lunch bag. You don't have to have white, you can use a brown one. I don't know if they come in other colors. I just happen to still have some white ones laying around. The side, this is what I think of as a standard lunch bag, but I'm going to give you the measurement just in case. 10 and a quarter inches by five inches. And, you know, paper bags are never exactly perfect. You know, there's little things in there and that's fine. If you have the smaller size, same, same fold will work. But then the measurements that I give you for your layering papers, of course, you you have to measure yourself and figure out. Okay, so we're going to open up the lunch bag and we're going to do one. We're going to do both sides the same, but we're going to do one at a time. So you open it up and you find the little point there, the little V where it comes in. And you're going to pinch this a little bit with your finger because what we want to do is fold along this crease line, um, fold it down flat. And again, my lunch bag is very wrinkly and not perfect, but it's working. And then what happens is, and I find for whatever reason, it's easier if you find the side with the notch. For me, both times this worked easier if I used that and it just suddenly, if you keep kind of pulling here and pushing down on this corner, it just flattens out, almost like magic. It's, it, it may look harder than it is, but it's really not hard. And then just kind of keep pressing it down. Okay, let's do the other side. 
same process. Find the little V, pinch it, and then it's like you're turning this crease inside out. So it's used to going the other way, and I want mine to now go this way. And laying it down on your workspace helps a little bit. And again, I just kind of keep flipping mine around until it starts doing what I want it to. One thing I did appreciate in the little video that the um, other channel did was she talked about how it doesn't have to be perfect, and it, and it doesn't. And because lunch bags, you know, are not perfect. And then she said, it was so cute, she said, you should go watch it. She said, and that's great for me because I'm not perfect either. And I just really liked that. That resonated with me. Okay, so now you just have something that looks like this. It's so easy. And you have this little flap. I wonder if we could figure out something to do with this flap. Let me give that some thought. I just, on this one, I did use a little Velcro dot to close it. I just glued it down and then covered it with paper, and, which is what she did. But let me think about that. Maybe we can do something with that. Okay, so the next thing you do, once you get it nice and flat, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect, take the open end and fold up. You don't wanna go all the way. You wanna leave yourself a little bit of space. And depending on how much you fold this up, that could also impact. I was just sitting here thinking about my layering pieces. If I don't layer it or I don't fold it the same way I folded the other one, the measurement will be a little off. So the other one, I obviously came up just a touch more. Just a touch. Just make sure everything is still closing easily. Because then you fold down the flap. You don't want to come too far where it, um, you know, it's not easy to get into, into your opening. It's up a little more than I like. I'm going to go back to my original fold. And again, it's possible this lunch bag is just a smidge different size. So... This is the panel that I've already trimmed for my back panel, and it fits nicely. And if these are a little too wide, I can always trim them off or just not have as much of a white border around it. So I would say before you cut all of your pretty papers you're going to layer with, fold your bag and then double check the measurements. We'll go over that again in just a minute. But it's just a fold up and then a fold down, and you have your basic envelope. I'm going to layer mine before I glue it, you don't really have to add a decorative paper back here, but you do see that, like if you really open it up, and there's a lot of stuff will fit in here, guys. Um, you know, you, you see it, but it could be plain, just like this one. I left that one plain, right? So, that, that really is your choice, but I'm going to layer mine like I did. It really makes it feel good. Definitely going to do the back. So, okay. Now, the way I came up with the measurements, like I said, is I took my ruler and my lunch bag folded out like this is seven and seven eighths inch wide. So, I cut my decorative paper to seven and three quarters so that I would have a little bit of a white trim all the way around. And I could have gone just a smidge shorter and a, a smidge less deep, I think, to make mine fit in there. It's And then this, this measurement here with the way I folded it is right at three and three quarters. And here I cut mine at three and a half. So it really should be fitting. Yeah, you've got almost that eighth of an inch. So I would pick up the correct piece. Okay, and then this is the piece for the back is a little bit wider. So I did the same seven and three quarters and then I cut this piece a little right at three and three quarters. It measures almost four. So I'm guessing my two little paper bags ended up being 
a little bit different measurements because I used this one and then cut the papers the same. I hope I'm not confusing you guys. I will list the measurements that I cut my layering papers in the description for you, but double check if your bag is off or your if this fold is a little deeper or a little more um, narrow this way, your papers may need to be a little bit different size. So that was the measurements for this panel, this panel, and this panel. And again, I will list them in the description. And then for the inside flap and the flap, I cut mine the same. <laughs> and I did seven and three quarters again by, and this one is two and seven eighths deep, tall, whatever. Long, tall, wide, tall. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we'll have to pick the right words. Okay, so before we glue our envelope together, I want to get that back layer in. And I'm going to look at the papers that I cut out. I just used some of the papers that came in this kit to decide which ones I want for which panel. And this is the one that I did cut for the back panel and wanted to be able to see those pretty Christmas trees. So let's go ahead and glue this one down first. And because it's the only one I cut to this size, and I definitely want to make sure it gets glued on in the correct place. Okay, I am living on the edge, guys, and we're gonna use blue Distress Ink. I did that with this one, and I liked it. This is the Broken China color, and I also have this one in the Oxide, nope, Speckled Egg, Speckled Egg, so a lighter blue. So if you don't want yours, as bright of a blue, that might be a good choice. You can always go back to standard brown colors. You know, my walnut stain would look nice on here. It's hard for me to live on the edge and use different colors, but here I go. If not for Christmas crafts, what else, right? And, you know, I'm just, I'm stretching a little. You also can skip Distress ink all together. Okay, I am going to use my wet white glue. This is Line Co. brand PVA glue. I'll show you what the original bottle looks like in just a moment. I put it in these little bottles because it's just so much easier for my hands and to get that nice precision line when I need it. So, and I you saw, if you looked, I added glitter to the prototype. Ah, I used silver and then a, um, I guess this is just an iridescent. It's actually called iridescent unicorn. Guys, these glitters are ancient. I don't know if they even still make them. I'm sure I have some glitters that I like in my Amazon storefront. But I'm sure you can find some glitters or if you don't have any on hand um, on Amazon or in your craft store that are similar. Okay, I told you I'd show you the glue bottle really quick. If you do click on my Amazon storefront or my link, it will take you to my favorite junk journaling supplies and craft supplies. This is my favorite wet white glue. I use others, but this is kind of my everyday go-to glue. And it, you can buy it in different sizes if you just want to give it a try. I... It is an affiliate link, which means Amazon will pay me a couple pennies if you make a purchase, no cost to you. Don't feel like you need to do that. That is totally um, optional. Uh, you know, just if you need something, don't don't feel like you, you need to. That is not how I, um, I mean, I appreciate the little few pennies that I get here and there, but that is not why I do it. I do it so you guys can, can see what I like to craft with in case, in case you just need some supplies or some suggestions. Okay, I am going to ink around these and I cut this piece and this piece the same size and they fit in there nicely. Again, check your, double check yours, but I'll give you the, my measurements. And then I'm going to layer them. So I just decided I'm going to put the one that shows a little bit more. I'm probably going to layer something on there. 
oh wait, or do I want that one too that has a little more of the, the blue? Let's do that. Let's put this one on the front and this one inside because this one you'll just kind of see when you, you go to open it up. And it is optional, this panel, if you want to save your paper for something else, it would still look great without this one. And I mentioned, guys, just because I use certain papers, and if you like the ones I use and you want to use them, wonderful, but just because I use certain papers doesn't mean you can't adapt the project. And... Again, and for any season of the year. So this would be fun just for an envelope that gets tucked in a junk journal of any style or any occasion. Anytime you need something special for a gift or to go with a gift, I think these types of projects would be great. Sometimes I get requests, and I don't mind. I love requests. Keep sending them, guys. It gives me ideas. But sometimes I'll get requests for somebody will ask me to do the exact project I just did but instead of you know with birds could I do it with flowers you know or instead of with this theme you know can you do it Christmas and and I can but a lot of people like to see this is the one that was fitting really snugly you know, a lot of people like to see new techniques and new ideas. And so I kind of try, if I do kind of a repeat, I try to space it out because a lot of times people don't go back and watch the older videos. Um, but I also try, or I try to do a twist or a little bit different idea if, if, that, if, if that somebody wants just different themed papers to watch. Okay, we are going to add glue to both sides of this flap, and that is going to make... It'll leave this one open and then another tuck spot behind and hold our envelope together. If you want to, um, the original video, she sewed around hers and it looked really pretty. And I might do that. I might make some that I sew around, but I didn't for the video. So you, you definitely don't have to sew. Okay. And now we're going to layer on the flap papers. And I think I'm going to use this one for the outside and then this one for the inside. This one, I think, coordinates, it does, with the back paper. Now, I am going to give this a thought. So what I did in the original one, let me show you, is I laid my paper in here just like this and got it lined up the best I could, nice and straight. And then I closed the flap. And then I just took my pencil and I just carefully drew a line. Whoa. And now I'm going to carefully go just to the left of the lines I drew and hope that when I lay this down, I like it and I do. Now, if we decide to do the inside like I did the original, I then took the piece that I'm going to layer here, and I make, first I make sure this looks good, okay, and it does, it looks good on the inside too. It probably has to be flipped over to fit right, because when it's flipped this way, you know, they're, they're, the angles are not exactly the same on a paper bag. So then it, it's fitting right this way. So then I just use this one as a template. And I thought I cut these the same size. It doesn't look like I did. I cut this one a little bit wider. Anyway, I'm going to then use this as the template to angle it off. Okay? And then you have two and you glue them on. Now, before I do that with the inside, I want to think about this little flap. Like, would it be fun... To do something different. I don't know. I don't know. I did that. I don't know that there's really any value to a tuck spot here because then when it's closed things are going to fall out. I guess we could make it just cover it with paper and decorate it so you just have like this kind of funky flap there. I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. If I get some inspiration of how I might be able to use 
this little flap on this envelope, I'll let you know. And we'll do another video with that. If I come up with something, if you guys come up with something, you let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this down just so that it's a little bit more secure before I start layering on my papers. Again, it doesn't need a lot of glue. It's gonna have another piece of paper right on top. And I did, if, while I was talking, I added a little glue to where I've got all these little, little ruffles of the paper bag, just so that when I go to add mine, it is uh, a little bit easier. Okay. I am going to use this as the template, even though I didn't cut these the same. I thought I did. We all make mistakes. And I'm going to make sure it fits on here this width. And if it does, we're going to go with it. We're not going to worry about it. And it does. And it fits in there. Secure it fine. All right. We just, we're going to craft right through it. Craft through those mistakes, guys. It's just paper. It's just paper. And I don't know, again, Sue, if you're watching from Tallahassee, you are what was our motto back in the day. And it's still my motto. There are two sides to every piece of cardstock. <laughs> we were big into group of friends into stamping up and rubber stamping and making cards. We did all kinds of stuff, but especially cards. And when you would stamp on a piece of cardstock, your image, and then you color it or whatever you're going to do with it or cut it out, if you messed it up, all you had to do was flip that piece of cardstock over and try again. Uh, it's just paper. You know, we can, fi we can fix just about anything. Okay, I'm gonna glue, because it's open and this one is in my hand, we'll do the inside one first. I do try to get my glue on neatly, ha ha, ha right? Um, but to the edge, so it doesn't lift up and flap on me. But depending on how thick you lay your glue, you also don't want it to ooze out too much and accidentally glue your envelope closed. Okay, there we go. And it just, it's, it's kind of like when I was layering the ones for the, the Edith Holden journal I made I think last week. The, uh, the, it just starts to look so pretty to me once you start getting all of these pretty papers on here. It's like a whole different thing. It's like we've completely transformed it. And I love that. I thought I had some craft color brown lunch bags. And I'm sure I do somewhere in this craft room. And I was thinking I would make one of these with that, with the, that color bag. But I couldn't put my fingers on them and I knew where the white ones were. <laughs> so we're doing white again. Now this is where you can see it is not as, the, the width was not quite right for this one. And as I said, we are gonna craft through it. So I'm probably going to look, I'm looking down, do I have something, oh, that would work, that's in arm's reach. <laughs> How about we do a, a strip of pom-poms on there? Will that be fun? I think that will be fun. Okay, so I'll probably regret doing this now and, and not at the end. So why don't we wait and be patient, but I'm gonna keep the pom-poms right there and we will cover that with a little bit of pom-pom. I am gonna do light inking around the edges. As much as I wanted to stick that pom-pom trim down, I am showing self-restraint, aren't I? All right, we are also going to then use some of the pieces from the kit to decorate ours. In, in some way and I have some pieces already cut out that we'll look at so just to remind you you have this opening and then this little flap and I was letting that glue dry before I showed you but I think it's looking great so the kit comes with uh, lots of little pieces and these are some of the pockets and I wanted to show you that G gave us the 
or the flaps so that you can score, fold, and then you have a nice roomy pocket. This was one of the pockets that I actually just cut those guides off because I wanted this to be a snug pocket. I didn't want things to accidentally fall out. So that's always an option. You can just cut those off and glue it down. This was a pocket in the kit as well. And of course you can always just use a triangle, right? But I'm gonna use this one. I like the contrast of the two blues and I'm going to just glue it down to be the inside pocket here. Which side? Before I glue it down, I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna use for a pocket up top and then I can decide where I want to. Now, again, in the kit, there's, all, there's fussy cuts, there's little journaling cards, there's circles. Oh, look, there's hearts, aren't they cute? And there is a if I can find some of them. There are some pieces that are this size. There's some tags. Tags. Look at this tree, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, and I love Santa. I, okay, there, there's a snowman. Okay, just some different ones. It didn't do, the poinsettias are pretty too. But that's what I used for this upper pocket. And again, if you're careful with your glue, make it side load, a gift card fits right in there and it's really nice. And so I wanna use one of those I'll use the poinsettias. I wanna use one of those for this pocket. And I'll give you the measurement in case you're using a different paper kit. This little card measures two and a quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. So again, a gift card will slide right in here. I'm gonna hold it on this side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna install it on the left so it'll slide in this way. You can always bring it over and put it on the right. That, that part doesn't really matter. I'm just deciding based on my image. My dogs are barking. I don't know if you guys can hear them. They're downstairs and I'm upstairs in my craft studio. Okay, I'm gonna let that hold before we put anything in there. And I think I will this time bring this pocket on this one, I did both of them oriented to the left because I was thinking, okay, if I have something sticking out here, do I want things coming out of this pocket in the same space? So I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring it to this side. And again, check your measurements for your paper bag, but I'll give you the measurement of this pocket too once I've stuck it down. And if you want to use the flaps, you can have it roomier if you want. This one is three and three quarter inches by one, almost one and three quarters. Yeah, I would say one and three quarters if you're cutting your own. Okay. Now, I may put something else on this pocket or here once I decide what we're putting inside, but let's let's do the, the top flap. Now, off camera, because it would need time to dry, I played with some of my different glitters and added glitter to a few pieces that we're gonna use for this one, but I may show you how I applied the glitter and then just set those aside to dry here in a minute. So I used a couple of different kinds and I'll show you how I did this. This has the iridescent unicorn and then again, talk about ancient, um, some of this crystal quartz chunky glitter. And this is, for me always a challenge to work with so I tried a strategy and I'm liking it a few are flaking off but I'll show you how I did this in just a minute that's on a little journaling card oops Santa I just added some of the iridescent what is that yeah iridescent unicorn and then on like this oval I did some of the silver right and then on this one, I did some of that chunky again, and I'm not as happy 
with how this turned out. So I'm not gonna, not even gonna worry about this. I just added glue and tried to put it on. This one I did something a little different. So I definitely want some glitter on the front of this. I really like this oval around the Christmas tree march. Hmm. Maybe I'll layer it something like this. Now, let me show you how I did the strip of glitter though, because that I did, I actually did this recently for a video I did for Pink Monarch Prints, but I know not everybody goes over there and watches over there and more people watch there than here actually. But let me just show you really quick. It's favorite, favorite technique of mine. Use some two-sided tape. This one is, I think the eighth in, eighth of an inch width, but you could use wider. And I imagine they make it that even that super skinny, but I just put a strip of this down and I'm gonna use my bone folder. And y'all, I'm gonna be so brave doing glitter on camera. Here we go. Because I spill glitter and make a mess all the time. All right, pull up your two-sided tape. Now this, for, for this one, I'm going to, should we use the silver or should we do the, let's do the silver, it's easier to see. So it would help if I had a bigger piece of paper under here, but I don't have one close by. So I'm just gonna sprinkle my glitter on and I'm using the top that has the little holes you can just pour it on. In fact, I'm gonna have to open it up anyway to get it back in here. So we'll just use that method pour. I like, I don't know why it makes me happy to see a lot of glitter pour out. I put it back. <laughs> Again, use a bigger piece of paper. If your project is this wide, if I was doing a little piece like this, it would not matter. All right, glitter, there we go. Tap your project. And then, look how pretty, just take your finger and just kind of push it down. And very little little glitter comes up. But I've been doing this for a long time like this. I saw somebody else do it at some point. And it really does stay on there. Isn't that cool? But you have to, the, the fine glitter is, I think, key to the tape. And that's what I was gonna show you with that little journaling card. No idea where it went. Here it is. I wanted to use some of the chunky glitter. So all I did here was, I wonder if it would look weird if I did a strip. I'm not going to, I'll do it on a card. I did a strip of tape. I put the chunky glitter down, patted it down, knocked it off. And then I went, there's still glue because the way the little chunky, or the glue from the tape, the adhesive, you could still feel the sticky these didn't cover it up enough, so I went back over it with a really fine iridescent unicorn, and it's not sticky. I pushed it all down, and some of the chunks are staying on there, too. No idea if you can even see what I'm talking about on camera with these chunks, but there you go. This was, look, this is so loose that if I'm not careful, I dump it out. The, and this is so old. And this was like back in the day when you could buy these and then stack them up, I think, for projects where people used a lot of glitter. I have no idea. Long, long ago. Okay, I should probably stop playing with this with that jar of glitter open on my desk. <laughs> You're probably thinking, Pam, that's why you always spill your glitter. The first thing you should do is dump this back in and close the glitter up because you can definitely make a mess very quickly as my work surface shows. Okay, even when you're being careful, if you're playing with glitter, it gets everywhere. So if it bothers you, skip the glitter. You don't have to have the glitter. A piece of washi tape would be cute along here skip it all together. Don't even do that. You could also just cut a strip of, of one of the coordinating papers and do a little strip like that across if you don't want to play with the glitter. So lots of options. Don't, don't feel like you have to do that. Real quick, because I told you I would, and I, I'm, in, I'm in the glitter. I'm, I'm doing glitter right now. Let's 
Let's do a little strip across here for this girl and show you that technique really quick. I explained it, but I'll just show you really fast. Get your tape down. I'm gonna trim it off. Put my tape away. Let's see. All right, so burnish it down so it's stuck down really good. Pull it off. And then we're going to add some of the chunky glitter. See, it opens and closes on its own. It's just very loose, that top. All right, and I just pushed them down. And these stick to your fingers. Tapped them off. They're cute. They're there. But you can feel the sticky. Hear it? can't see it. You can probably hear the difference than the ones that have the fine glitter on them. Okay, I'm going to set her aside. We're going to try to get some of these pieces back in here. I was using gold glitter for the project I mentioned the other day, and I came downstairs and my husband said, you are sparkling for real. For reals, Pam! <laughs> because I glitter all over me. Okay, now... I'm taking the iridescent unicorn and I'm gonna just pour that over top of the chunk, chunky glitter. All right, don't spill that. Tapping it off and again, pressing it down. And so all that little bitty fine glitter gets in all those grooves that the chunky glitter missed of the adhesive. Now, will they stay on there forever? I don't know, but I like how they look. They make me happy, and we're going with it. Okay. And again, you can skip the glitter or come tell me some different strategies you've used. Now, for these, like this, and like around Santa that has the unicorn, I used the traditional method. Um, and this is a Cosmic Shimmer Flake and Glitter Glue. You really can use your, your regular wet white glue, definitely like Art Glitter Glue, which by the way, Art Glitter Glue is not just for glitter. You guys know that and I use it all the time. But if you want something, especially for some of the chunkier ones, I have this for some different things that I've done. It basically just says it's specially formulated for use with gilding flakes, foils, and glitter. Once applied, the glue dries to a clear, tacky finish and remains tacky until it is used. It dries completely clear and has excellent bonding properties. Perfect for use with foils, glitter, paper, card, and many more applications. I've seen some people use this just as their wet white glue. So it's a little bit pricey for me with as much glue as I use, but it's an option. Okay, I have had this one for a while, like several holiday seasons. I don't do a ton of glitter, I guess. And I like it. So here we go. I am going to just do a nice blob around this fussy cut like that. And like I said, you don't even have to add the glitter immediately if you get distracted or you're doing something else. But it will just get tacky. But once you've got the glitter on there, and these have had hours to dry, you know, like these, it doesn't rub off. I mean, if you take your fingernail and try to scrape it off, I'm sure it would. But it doesn't come off with normal touching and rubbing. And it's no longer tacky or sticky, if that was a question or something you were thinking about. And I'm going to use this iridescent. I did the silver around the oval, but we'll do the iridescent because I'm enjoying that. I know it's a little harder to see probably on camera. Boy, Pam, that was a generous amount of unicorn. <laughs> okay, get your fingers in there. Okay, so it's just like, I don't know if you guys did this when you were kids. I just accidentally touched my blob of glitter on the paper see right here you guys can see that and got the adhesive onto that paper but 
enough stuck on the stocking, so I'm happy with it. But this is how we used to do it, like back in grade school. I'm going to set that aside. Now, it does need time to dry if you use that method. The method with the tape, you don't have to wait. But I haven't figured out how to do tape around, like, fussy cut and circles and ovals and things like that. Okay, that's all of the glitter demo, demo for today. That's where I accidentally touched the stocking down when I was tapping it. So be careful when you're tapping. The safe way to do it would be to hold it like this. This one's dry and tap above instead of what I was doing, which was tapping it down onto the paper. But we learn from our mistakes. Okay, here we go. We have this. Now, I'm going to come back here and decide which of these pretty pieces I have already glittered for us am I going to put on the front. And I also want to remember what this is going to look like with my pom-poms. Just make sure I like it. Yeah. It's going to be fine. All right, we'll use the oval and the fussy cut just like I did here. And on this one, I added a little baker's twine that has, it's white and silver on her little package. But because I'm adding the pom-pom, I don't think I'm gonna do anything else to Santa. So the first thing I'm gonna do is glue this oval down. And I am, even though these are dry and the glitter's not rubbing off, I'm still being careful with it. I'm not, like I said, I'm not taking my fingernail or my bone folder and scraping it. I'm just being careful, rub in there. And now same with Santa. And Santa does have the iridescent unicorn around the edges, like the little angel does. So I'm gonna be careful. Ooh. I'm gonna kinda get him centered. Ah, he's a little off center, it's okay. There we go. Cuteness. All right, let me set these aside. And then let's do the pom-pom. Nope, we're gonna wait on the pom-pom one more moment and we are going to decide in here, what do we want? So I have a heart. It doesn't give enough contrast. I do love this bell, but the bell. Let's do the bell. Or we could do an angel. An angel with a heart? Hmm. I'm going to do the bell. The bell is speaking to me, so the bell it is. Now, do I want it right there in the middle? I'm going to do it off to the side. I'm just going to be careful, though, not to close up with glue the edge of my pocket. So I'm just going to hold the circle like this so that I know there's not any glue right there, just in case. All right. And I think I even put a little bow inside. Oh, it was on the tag. That was it. So we'll have tags and things. So I don't think I'm going to decorate that pocket. Okay. And then look at this sweet little girl. Oh, let me show you what I did. I have a piece here. I just printed, again, some of the journaling pages that are in the kit. Isn't that pretty? I only printed on one side because I think the white looks fine. As uh, This is more like for a letter or to use for something else. And I'm going to fold it. And I'm just doing approximate thirds as long as it fits. Hopefully I didn't leave it too deep. As long as it fits, it's okay. So I'm gonna do the little girl. And I slid this one just right in here on my other one. And again, you'll just have to make sure you cut it so that it slides in there without a problem. But I like leaving it nice and big. And then I just went in and I added some more of the little cards and there's little labels and some that almost look like a postcard shape. There's just lots, so like the little postcards. And I just put some in there and I might decorate them more later, I'm not sure. I love this Christmas tree. 
I love all of these. And this sweet little angel here, it's too tall, but you can do two, or I can stick it down inside. And on the other one, I also put one of these little cards. So again, stuff it with whatever you want, and it does hold a lot, look at that. It just really does. So you could do some pictures for somebody if you wanted to send them printed pictures. Let me find a little something something to put in here. I probably could put one of these cards and not waste time on camera. Uh, cutting something out. There we go, the snowman. I didn't want to use the snowman, so that worked. And again, add ribbons, layer these up, decorate these, make them special. However you, whatever speaks to you. There we go. I love making ephemera, but I really want to um, put the pom-pom trim on. Okay, <laughs> and I felt the need to have everything else done for some reason. Okay, I am going to, whoa, put the stopper in that. I'm going to use the two-sided tape again, and I think that is the right width for this section, and I, I know it's a good width for my ribbon. So I am going to add the two-sided tape here. And cut that, yay, at an angle. Didn't have to, this side I think is straight. <laughs> and I always feel better when I just kind of burnish that down just a little extra. I just know then it isn't gonna lift up when I'm doing this. I'm trying to get the edge of the tape up. There we go. All right, pom-poms. I think I'm gonna bring it this way and just trim that off in a minute. We're just gonna lay it down. And you can pull it out and stretch it, or you can leave it like I am, tighter. Let's show you what I mean. See how it stretches some? Okay, fun. <laughs> it looks like snow. Now I am going to cut carefully and an angle, my pom-pom trim. There we go. And I know, because I've been using this for other projects, it frays. So I'm going to use my fray check. Again, this is optional, but if you work with fibers and ribbons and they fray, this just will seal up the end so it won't unravel on you. And I have shown you guys that before. And again, you can go peek on my storefront to see some of these supplies if that's helpful. Oh my gosh, I love it. Now the only thing that we haven't done is I haven't added a Velcro dot. So these are the ones that I'm using. They're 3 8 7 inch and they're the super skinny ones. They have bigger ones, but I just find this is the size that I oops, turn back to over and over again. Okay, where's this gonna go? Depending on where I put the Velcro dot, it may hit. I may have to have Velcro right in the middle of my bell, and I don't want that. So I'm going to do two on this one. I'm going to have a little Velcro here, but that's okay. You don't really notice it. So I've got one there, and we'll do one about right here. And then add the other one on the back and it's definitely going to be secure with two and then press it down. I just try to, there we go, it's probably better to press them down and leave them for a little bit <laughs> instead of like what I just did and immediately pull them back up but I haven't really had one ever pull apart when it's stuck just to plain paper. If you were using a different base to your project, I, you know, I, I'm not sure, but I use it on paper and haven't had a problem. All right, I am thrilled with how it turned out. Put a little bow there later. All kinds of goodies inside, a piece of writing paper. You can do another big paper back there. If you want gift cards, you can do a check inside. So fun, right? I hope you guys like it as much as I do. 
everything, all the information that I told you I'd share will be down in the description of the box of the video. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you're doing. I would love to hear from you if you haven't already. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks, guys.